This week on the podcast, we are going to tell you how to live the optimum life. Now, that's a big, bold <laughs> claim, but we probably, over the last 200, I think, 30-something episodes. This is 213. No. Uh, Hold on. Yeah. What is it? Oh, well, on the Movers Friends Play podcast, Apple podcast preview page, Jack, it says 239 episodes. Did we stop counting? How's that? I make this 214 Let's not get yeah. back down in the detail. In the last 200 <laughs> episodes, we've had some quite astounding guests on from all fields and of the health and fitness frontier. And beyond. Uh, and we're going to talk about what we do with the information that we gain. And this was prompted by a question from a listener, which we like. We like questions. Send them in. Send us more. Um, so we're going to take what we do with the information that we get from talking to some great yes, brains. And uh, one thing that uh, you might enjoy, speaking of great brains, enjoy... Uh, getting some help some advice and some coaching and some entertainment with the the great brains of the coaches and the coaching staff and scorecard cynics at our next um which will be our second workshop of the new year the post-covid um uh, workshop experience no let's not call it that but you know what i mean <laughs> and basically <laughs> No one's we're, nobody's we're, coming back. Basically, to that. we're back on the road. <laughs> We've had our first workshop of 2022, and workshop number two of 2022 is in Landen, Landen Town, on the 6th of uh, March at Lift Movement, a uh, phenomenal, uh, beautiful uh, training space. And there are a few places, I feel like there was maybe like four places remaining last time I had a look when we recorded this. So there's a few places remaining. And if you want to come and enjoy, it's a full day experience. There's a new workshop that's a uh, workshop experience that is the entire day. And uh, it is a 125 quid. If you are a VC, a virtual costume online member or a VIP member, you get extra discount, but there are discounts for your membership. So check your emails for the codes for them. If you're a member, if not, then you pay the full whack, but it's still only 125 quid for a full day with all of our amazing coaches. So we'll see you there. If I was to do the maths on that, Jacko, just check, would it be cheaper to become a member to then get the discount uh, and then come to the workshop? Yes, it would, but I don't think that is... Do, is that are we trying to promote that but well, you've done it now so yeah people effectively if you signed up for a 999 you could you could actually here you go here's a hack talking about best life here's a hack for you <laughs> sign up for the seven day um free trial get the discount code get your discount off your member so you remember it's only 99 quid or if you're a vip at 75 quid there you go fill your boots you don't and then you can cancel your membership that that's 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 a hack that's that's uh whether we should stop that who like look it's out there there you go have it if you want it if you're clever if you're clever you got it you get rewarded for being like sneaky why not <laughs> it's like joe you know this is my favorite here's a here's a life hack for you tim go to the roundabout everyone's in the left hand lane i'm like no problem i want to go on straight on or left but i'm not queuing in that i'm gonna go all the way around the roundabout and then and then take my exit it's it's, it's basically that it's that type of scenario <laughs> Um, and it's there for you. There you go. There's a freebie. Put your wallet away. That one's for free. But I'm joking aside, though, if you were to take a membership <laughs> and come to the workshop, that is like cheese and wine, baby. That is the perfect combination because you're going to give you a lot of information in the workshop. So you're going to want to have that membership because that's where you're actually going to be able to remember, refresh, revise, and progress. <laughs> I've got a question page. for you, Tim. You'll know more about this of the platform that I, I, I think you probably can. Can you, like, could you sign up every week and just take the free week trial and then like cancel it and then like get another free trial and would you need a would you need a different email account? I think you need fifty two email accounts. Fair enough. For the year to get your annual. I mean, there's somebody out there that probably do that. I'd be, I'd be well, I did own David Jackson fifty one at hotmail dot com previously. In my original, that was my first ever you. email address. Don't email that people. I never check mm. it. Um, Listen, somebody else says listening to this, just remember we've got bills. <laughs> when you're thinking about getting a deal, there's there's currently a roof over my head, but there might not be if you take right. this. So we, we try our best and, and try to give you our best, and that should come with representing the banks. Be <laughs> kind to us because we are nice um, people. We are four minutes into an intro that the whole podcast was going to be concise, but we're uh, we're, we're four minutes into no, an we intro. Don't no, we don't So um, this question, oh, well, should, uh, roll the jingle and all that, and then we'll get into it, shall we? Listen, players, <laughs> you're listening to the Movement, Strength and Play podcast by the School of Calisthenics. Here are your hosts, Tim and Jacko. 
just before we dive in, Jack, <laughs> interesting to to consider to continue the rather jury good approach to the podcast. <laughs> what I enjoy, right, is people who talk to me. How do you do a podcast? I go. We've got, <laughs> we've got, we've got 239 episodes on on iTunes. Um, and I'm like, wow. I'm like, really? <laughs> It's just, and they're like, does it take long to prepare for? I'm like, yeah, uh, yes, yeah, we we do prepare. Like, diligently. I, I said, you want to listen to it? It's, it's a very relaxed kind of affair. What about when you've got guests on? Do you prepare questions for the guests? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm like, it's just, it's no, raw. Sometimes, like, conversation. I, some, that's what, like, have interesting sometimes conversation. It's, that's, sometimes that's the best way it goes. I, I don't want to give the idea, you know, I've got a, I've got a piece of paper here with loads of writing on. Look, there you go, proof. Um, oh, I, um, I had that conversation um, with someone yesterday on the podcast, Pod Barber. Shout out to Pod Barber. And mm. there was, um, it was a little bit of, um, I don't want to use the phrase cock off, but I said it. In terms of, so yeah, we've done that. To be fair to them, <laughs> they have their own studio, so it's pretty sick. I yeah, saw that. Pretty sick. Yeah. Let me see where I'm sitting right. I'm, I'm in my studio right now. Just yeah. Like um, but anyway, it was like, yeah, we've done 40 episodes. And I was like, oh, that's nice. We've done over 200. It was like, <laughs> nice calves. They come in men's. <laughs> Hours of thirty minutes, like, oh, well, yes, like absolutely. <laughs> Sometimes so, longer. Uh, yeah, we, we, we've we, we've had some, yeah, we've had some really good guests. We've had some amazing guests. Um, you've got uh, oh, I see you've got black microphone <laughs> protectors. Mine's red. We've got red. <laughs> uh, right, right. Before all, we've run out of in jokes. No one knows what we're talking about now. We've descended. Yeah. So we're not rolling the jingle again. We're going to get into it. That the. the um, yeah, question in from uh, a number of listeners. This has been more than one. I feel like one of them was Lewis, but I'm going <laughs> to struggle with the names. Anyway, I'm not going to get into <laughs> pronouncing. Many, many. No, no, this actually, this actually is true because um, a notion that some people listening will have experienced was was where this come from. Of like, love the podcast. Obviously, you're in the algorithm. So, love the podcast. Get some amazing guests on. Obviously, still love it when. You and Tim just do your own thing as well. Love that too, obviously. Like today. Today. But <laughs> you've had that much amazing information and insight from guests that's like expanded our brains and our minds. And we've shared this on the podcast ourselves. Like we learn a lot from the, the guests that we have on. And as the, as, as the listeners, it was like, how am I supposed to deal with how, how how do i how do i implement all this like there's so much stuff i want to try and do it all but i can't do it all and it's a bit overwhelming and so the question that came out of it or off the back of that was then like what do you and tim actually do with all that information and i thought you know what that is a great question i would like mm. to share what i or it made me reflect on that and i thought oh, yes i would like to share this and i thought i would also love to hear what tim does with all this information it's a good question because if you look, if you think about it, and I have pondered this very question before. So if you looked at it and go like, what does the optimum day look like? You're like, right, I wake up exactly the same time every morning and I go immediately and get my 30 minutes of sunlight exposure, natural sunlight on the skin and the face, uh, a little bit of exercise. I then come back, do a breathing exercise. So I jump in my cold plunge. <laughs> I then have a, I might be fasting. I might have a type of breakfast of a nutritionally balanced variety. A, kick, then, a kickback I mean? coffee. It's like, yeah, I would load myself up with caffeine, which you're not supposed to do for an hour and a half after waking and not after 12. So you've literally got a window of about 45 minutes. Yeah, I have like six double espressos during that period. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a really good question because I, I've often, we like Jack and I actually reflect on this again. What do you do with all this information? Because it's all good, right? And, and I think it's an interesting thing around the podcast is we get specialists on or people who are particularly sort of... Um, passionate, dedicated, spent many years in a specific line of inquiry, let's call it, or that's they've got their thing, as we all, we all probably do. Um, so they come on and they'll talk for 45 minutes very passionately about lots of things that you can do within their niche. But then for us who are trying to optimize our lifestyles, what do we actually do yeah. and how do we implement it? And I've said this before, is like, don't try. Don't try not to implement any of it, but don't try right. and implement all of it because you can send yourself like, I think you could quite easily send yourself. A little well, you can just get you can get a bit overwhelmed. Everyone, anyone, anyone can get overwhelmed mm. when you when there's a lot of anything, and information can be overwhelming. Yeah, for sure. 
But I think if you get like, what's that thing where you can get, I'm going to get this stat wrong, it's the Pareto. But it's like, is it 80% of your business will come from 20% of your clients? So is it something like that? So it's like 20% I think it's... of, 80% of your wellness might come from just 20% of. I think it's 60% of the time it works every time. I think that's the one you're looking for. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But basically what I'm trying to say is implementing is the decade. What I have done is go, where are the easy wins, which are going to give me the maximum benefit? Because oftentimes when we get, and I'm the same right with my specialist areas in Jack, but we've spoken about breathing and, and the similar sort of thing going, there's a big, there's a, there's a few things which you can do, which can take you yeah. a long way. Once you've done those things, the, the gains or the, it's the law of diminishing returns, right? the bits that you can get after that are going to be beneficial, but they're not going to add on as much yeah. as just getting the basics right. So that is my kind of philosophy and approach around most it's like of your minimal effective podcast, dose listening type of for scenario isn't it you're talking yeah. about yeah what's the low hanging fruit that i can i can implement so i'm going to give you a yeah. really good example and i don't know that she's become a consistent Ooh. listener but sophia ruan goucher mm. who did an episode for about toxic living that one for me was we i came off the call with that one i was like jack if you if you're not careful with that one you could literally become quite uh, or well, you, you, could, you could become Mrs. Jacko. <laughs> <laughs> I did. She didn't listen. She didn't listen. Don't worry. It. She didn't listen. She didn't listen to anything um, I say. She definitely isn't going to listen to the, what I say on the podcast. Yeah, true. She doesn't want to listen to you for half an hour. So, but that one is going right. Okay. So I've got. So what? Yes. There's there's, there's a point of going. What is in the products that I put in my skin, mm -hmm. for example? Um, am I buying or so if I read the skin screen, proverbs, you know, with, 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 yeah, with that, exactly. Same thing. So I'm like mindful about that, but there's kind of times where it, I can't do it all the time. It might be, for example, this is a good example. I go to the butchers, right? And the, I get the, I see the meat that I want on the butcher's counter. He then takes it from a nice metal tray and puts mm. it in a plastic bag for me. Now I don't want to eat that for two or three days. I'm not leaving it in the plastic bag for three days. I'm going to take it out of the plastic bag and then wrap it in something which is non-plastic. So it sits in the fridge until I want to cook it. Now that's, some people go, crikey to me, you're like a nose. But this is that thing, and, and I'm going, I'm going to throw it back to But it's low-hanging fruit. It's like on. you say, it's not hard to, it's it not hard fruit. to do that. It's not hard to do that. No. And the, the reality is, stuff leaking out of plastics, it's a real thing. Whether you, whether you believe it or not, whether you think it's BS or not, it's happening. So... Mm. Yeah, can you do something simple with it? Yeah. But these are like these are these like progressive overload approach of going like that. You don't have to do all of these things. That's just kind of like over the time of going, what is in my shower gel product? And I'm going to go and have a look through and mm. see what it is. And is there some better choices I can make there? Because I'm going to put stuff on my face every day. I don't know if you know, I've got a skincare routine. Look at that. Um, Tim's 65 years old. Look at him. <laughs> I don't feel like that old today. Um, so I use products from Proverb, which are great. And they are like completely organic, plastic free, da, 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 all that kind of chemical free stuff. But then you start to do that and you go, okay, what else is there that's kind of like might be a little bit toxic in life? And that's one example. And I actually, that, if I'm being honest, it was a really interesting conversation, but it wasn't my favorite one because I was like, how far do you go down this route? Because yeah. we live in a world which is toxic, right? For the human, basically. I, I like this idea we had Dr. Gay a long yeah. time ago saying that we are cavemen living in the space space age world. And, and I think there is that truth, a lot of truth in that. So you could like go and just go look at your house and go, I need to get rid of all this. I've got to change my bed. I've got to change my lighting. I've got yeah. to change. And it's like, oh, let me give it, let me give you two simple ones that I've done from that, um, from that toxic episode. Like, so turn, turning the Wi-Fi router off at night. It's like, we don't need Wi-Fi at night. We're not, we're not using it. So yeah. turn it off. It's like, is it hard to, and it actually where my router is, is the same place my TV is. So I'm actually just pressing two switches. Two on. It's like easy. Put my phone on airplane mode when mm -hmm. I don't want to, sometimes it's like, I just don't want to get distracted. Or again, like there's periods when it can actually, your phone could just be on airplane mode and it's actually not a problem. It's a bit annoying when you're trying to get older, Mrs. Jacko, and she literally never has a phone <laughs> on you. Like, you're now turning into my dad who has his phone off <laughs> and I'll only turn it on to call you. Um, but yeah, there's, there, there's two little ones for me. I'm going to just, can I just like go back a step mm, before go. diving into um, any more specific ones of just zooming back out and going, um, I don't know if this is a thing. I feel like someone said it to me the other day of um, the rule of three. If it's not a thing, I'll claim it. Um, the rule of three. 
if I hear three people say the same thing that I trust those people or are they similar thing? So if three people start talking about lymph and the importance of the lymph system and then we speak to Perry Nicholson, who is an absolute legend and um, uh, and an expert in lymph and he starts going, uh, well, obviously he's going to say it's really important because that's his thing. Um, he's the lymph guy. Um, but other people have like confirmed that that I trust and it's like, well, then that's going to be something that I will then consider, uh, uh, appreciate that this is something that's maybe a thing. And then um, particularly when someone like Perry says, well, all you got to do is like rub here, rub, rub six places for like five seconds on each place. I'm like, I can do that. Or like put some tape on there sometimes at night to help you the, the lymph of my, well, I can do that. Like it's, it, it's not that hard for me. Whereas maybe there's other things that are, if no one else has like confirmed it as is it a real thing, doesn't mean we just automatically dismiss it. Dismiss it, but it might be like okay, I want to do I or do I not want to investigate this further? Um, and then it's then that that um, that play of like how much investment of time, energy, and stuff is it going to take to implement some of these things, and what are the rewards of some of those things? Um, if I would say for starting to go a little bit more detailed, if it's there's a difference for me between like training based for like immediate results compared to health based for like longer term results. If it's something that is like your like the plastic thing you're saying plastic leaching into your food, if that's potentially going to give me cancer and massively affect my longer term health or whatever the the things are, don't don't misquote me as I'm not a doctor. But then if it's something that's really going to impact my like my health and my wellness and ultimately then for my happiness for a long period of time that deserves some attention. I'll get excited by something that might give me some like quick wins in my training, like gains, but it's not as a, it's not as quite a higher priority as something that's health-based. So like a simple one that we've done a uh, conversation with Sally Bell and um, uh, the Pied Piper of, of um, what's Piper's farm? What was, um, Peter, that's Peter. it. Going, the, 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 Peter Piper. Not his name is no, not Peter Piper. In my mind, he is. Um, that like trying to source good quality. Like if I think of a Jacko at university used to buy bird's eye chicken things, and there was probably <laughs> zero chicken there. And then, or it was mechanically yeah, reclaimed. And then, and then Jacko post university progressed onto actual chicken breasts, but just from oh look how cheap these ones are from this terrible supermarket and go for that the the cheapest because you know value for money um as and it has progressed into <laughs> like actually i want high quality stuff because i've started to get educated on you know people like sally bell uh, dr sally bell people like um peter piper um or peter from pipers about educating us in terms of like what those animals have been fed or the quality of it's going to affect the quality of the nutrients in them or the, the, the way your uh, vegetables are farmed or like what the soil, like these, these things are affecting the nutrients in the foods we eat and the density of the nutrients in them. And so it's no longer in my mind, I appreciate and I've heard it enough times from enough different people, understanding that the, the quality of the food and how those things are being produced impacts like what it's going to be like for me in terms of nutrition and, and nutrients when I eat them makes that a, makes that a priority. So like buying higher quality, but, but less of, um, is something that we've, we've done at, at, at Shez Jackson and I've literally had a, a, an order arrive today from Piper's farm itself. Um, I think SOC five, you get discount on that um but yeah that's it's like and the th the thing is and if you've never done if you've never actually done this you get like an organic chicken from pipers and you cook that nice and you tell me that that isn't better than than your stuff from you know you need to start looking at chicken just stop buying it because it's expensive yeah. like proper like free range organic chicken is pricey so i've stopped kind of i've kind of back of that one just on the food subject i don't eat as much chicken these days because i know that what i'm getting in the supermarket when peter said to me that 
there's a farm that produces a million chickens a week not far from here so there'll be an absolutely battery kind of like i don't buy all sorts any meat any meat from a supermarket anymore and never yeah. will i don't think unless you have to um unless you have to well you could just not eat it you could just, just have, a, have a banana <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so food is an easy one. Uh, I've I've probably done the same. I would say I can yeah. replicate uh, your practices there. So I think that may, we could probably go through podcast by podcast and say what we've done. But the, the biggest thing for me is like, what are the easy wins that uh, you can implement? Because these things I was going to mention before when we spoke to Phil Learning, we talk about this yeah, progressive sorry. overload in lifestyle, and you're going well, like some of the stuff like is might be a stretch too far. When you listen to it, I can't I can't be bothered to do that. But what you'll find is that if you take the low hanging fruit, the easy wins, put some of those things in, get those things embedded, realize that they're better, then you can go and do more. So it's, I think if you try and implement everything that comes out of the podcast, it can be quite overwhelming. But if you just try and take one thing from each conversation, you go, I can do that. I'm going to, I'm going to give that a go. Then yeah. it's, it's actually quite easy to stack those things together. Um, yeah. And you might, I think some of the stuff, you know, like, will you feel different from buying food from, um, an organic sustainable farm immediately or not maybe maybe not yep. but it's an it'll taste different it'll taste different for sure um but it's, this is the thing again i would rather make that investment and decision now and then potentially reap the benefits in 20 years time than buying something that i know has been not ethically farm that's a big one for us as well just going like, is mm. it ethical where does it come from um as close to source as possible like you, the, the conditions of the for the animals all that sort of stuff is important um so yeah that's definitely an, an interesting one and i think sometimes the thing i was going to put my last point on this sort of stuff is because the, the big takeaway you've got to listen to it and go and find out what you can do yeah is that i'm probably if there's some things a little bit seasonal with them or let's call it in, in training terms i would probably periodize some of this stuff so i don't have a cold shower every single day i don't, I don't have the option at the moment with the kids to go for a cold plunge in the lake uh, i don't have a cold tub outside my house so i will use cold water is it called therapy? Should we call it therapy? Exposure yeah. in the form of a shower, which is actually probably from a mindful perspective or resilience perspective, actually harder than getting in a cold lake. Jack and I were talking about this the other day because it trickles on you and it's like annoying. Um, <laughs> but I do that in periods of time because sometimes it's just like, I just not feeling it. I've got enough on, enough on and whatever else. I'm not super kind of consistent with absolutely everything. There'll be times like every Christmas where I didn't fast at all. Whereas now we're kind of back into the new year. I'm going for extended periods of time where I'm not eating. But that idea for me is it's not really about intermittent fasting. I just think it makes sense that we give our stomach a break every now and yep. again, because sometimes you can eat late at night, especially around social occasions. I'm not hungry when I get up in the morning. So why do I eat just out of habit? And then I actually get past that window where you go, oh, do you know, I could fancy a coffee and a X, Y, Z, whatever. And then at lunchtime, I'm like, well, that's just a real easy one. I don't do intermittent fasting every single day, but there are times when I will do. And I think that's kind of, that works for me. It's just like, it's got a yeah. little bit of focus, a little bit of time to dedicate this thing. And this is that 80-20 like thing. Like I don't, in my perspective is when you are balancing out lifestyle, commitment, like my house is busy with the kids. Like it's not always easy to kind of have all of these kind of things lined up all the time. But it's here, if we are doing something for our training, health, wellness, longevity, whatever that looks like, and we're starting to move those pieces around and you periodize them around a little bit, I think that's a really good start. To, to not have to try and do everything all the time because my lifestyle at the moment is not, it's just, that's just difficult. And I don't want to add more. One thing I do know is if I get stressed by these things, it will negate yeah, yeah. the benefit of actually doing them anyway. Exactly. Yeah. No, I think I've written, I've written down like on, on my, on my, on my notes, I've written down not being a rigid, a rigid, mm. um, as the Welsh would say, um, because and that's that's just like such a key element i think to this of going when we so there's some things like from the sleep sleep expert nick littlehouse around like things we can do to improve our sleep like the red light therapy that that we both still use um stuff from z health performance and the the circus around neurology training like do i uh do i incorporate some bits of like vestibular work or having a break or getting light exposure or using the red light um, thinking about how do I improve my uh, sleep hygiene? Do I do I try to implement some of those things? Yes. Do I get them all right all the time? No. Do I do I feel like I understand a little bit better? Like yes. Um, and then are there periods where there's a bit more of this or a bit more of that because I know what it is that my body sort of needs to to do? And I think that that idea of like 
not being rigid. I think the thing that makes us feel overwhelmed is when we take all the information, we think we've got to do all the information all of the time rather than going like, you've got all of the information, try bits, you've got to taste it, you've got to see whether you like it, whether it works for you and, and whether you can actually fit it in or not. And if you're, if the benefits are worth the, the, in the investment in time and some, in some cases money as well, but not feeling like you have to be rigid with it just because this is the, the only times I've failed in like trying to like have something in my like routine is when I feel like I've got to do it every day. Yeah. It then actually never and then I just stopped doing it. The things that have stayed consistent with me that would let's say it forms a, a routine is where I'm not putting the pressure on that I have to do that thing every day. So I don't use my red light every single day. And I don't do oh, I'm just trying but you mean there's certain mm. I don't do vestibular work every single day or I don't do this every single day. But um are there are there there'll be some things I do every day, but then um that's because i probably feel like i get the biggest bang for my buck on them and they're the easiest thing for for me to do and they're the most important thing for me to do but there was a notion that um joyce joycey came down on saturday morning so sorry mrs jacko came down saturday morning and um joyce isn't the mistress it's just her nickname um <laughs> saturday morning she was like well happy like proper smug and she was like she'd had time in the morning to do whatever she wanted and she was like i have had a royals royce morning and i was like what do you mean you had Rolls Royce morning? What, what, what does that mean? She's like, well, what I'm starting to do now is I've got like different types of routines. I've got like me, me weekend Rolls Royce morning where I'm like, I haven't got any time. I'm not going to, there's nothing in my diary to like make me have to do a, something at a certain time. So she was like, I did me red light. I did this. I did me bouncing on me bounce. I did blah, 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 whatever. I did me with half <laughs> sheet, whatever. She did all of the things that make her feel great. And she was like buzzing and it was just great to see. And then it's like on other mornings, it's like a, a very shortened thing of like, oh, I basically like brush my teeth. I have a shower and I have my breakfast and I go to work. And that's like the streamlined version. And that's not the Rolls Royce version. And I really like that idea of going, you can take all these bits of information and go like, okay, when I have more time or when I, when, when this allows like, this is what my this is what that setup feel is like in the morning, and then at other times it's this. And I think that if that's not putting the pressure on to say like you have to have a routine or down for routine, but just have not being rigid and having some flexibility in the types of things that you do. And ultimately, I think that my biggest takeaway from this, if we're talking about just morning, not for some reason I'm talking about a morning routine, but it doesn't have to be a morning routine. But on the morning thing is just like understanding and realizing, trying, tasting what things make you feel really great in the morning and do those things and like not just doing the habit, not just if your alarm wakes you up and your alarm is your phone and on your phone after pressing stop on the alarm, you go straight on something on your phone. Chances are that isn't the best start to the morning, but it's just a path of least resistance, easy thing that you've just, that, that you've that habit that you've got into, um, you know, and I've heard a lot of different people that I trust say that like you should have a period of time in the morning where the, you don't go on your phone straight away. Just do something else, whatever it is. Um, do you mean that, to say how one... my morning starts? Go on, tell us, Timbo, and then, and then we'll wrap things up. Daddy, I need a poo. <laughs> <laughs> That's often the first thing I do in the morning is go and help a, a small person with his morning toilet routine. But he's got a routine for sure. I have less yeah. of a routine. He has got like he has got. <laughs> You've got his routine. Yeah, I work on his routine. And, and I was my last point on this one was just like <laughs> one thing I really think Sally had hit uh, Dr. Sally Bell hit on the on the head was just around that connection side of things and the human connection. And if mm. habits of and implementing things start to affect your the flexibility you have with relationships, yeah, great point. Yeah, then that's great also point. going to be more detrimental. I was chatting to this clinical psychologist last week, and, and he was saying that the, the research will suggest that like, one of the biggest things that you can do, or what, one of the biggest things which is evident in the length, length of time that you're going to live, and it was like, it's significant, is relationships. So mm. those things like not eating something like, I, I'm sometimes quite strict with my diet, whereas if we're in a place where, the, where the, the mood is right, and Jack wants an ice cream, I'm eating ice cream, because that's about him and me sharing that moment together and that's of that's of value. So if, I think that's an, I've been, I am quite an all or nothing person, and have a tendency to kind of I'm black or white all in. So if I say I'm going to do something, I can be pretty disciplined about it, and I can sometimes be unwilling to flex. 
Um, but I'm becoming much more relaxed. Our kids will do that to you in terms of you don't have a lot of choice sometimes. But just valuing that kind of that, that morning routine is he, he wants to come into bed for a cuddle. I'm going to go, I'm going to have my human connection because there's a time when he's not going to want to get in my bed for a cuddle. And I like those <laughs> morning cuddles. That's a good way to start the day when my little boy comes in and like, Daddy, I love you. And I'm like, okay, there's a good way to start the day. Yeah. Um, so that's my morning routine. I don't have these other kind of like opportunity because when we're on, we're on the, the house is like chaos in the morning. But it's like, I appreciate that and I'm grateful for that. And that is also just part of, I think, that that adds health benefits to itself. That's very woo-woo from me. But do it straight. Feel it. Yeah, it's straight up. It's straight up and it's and it's true. And there's actually we we should get someone on um someone on to like there are some like really cool like I watched something on um was it on YouTube about this is it's a bit it's about it was about like nature and connect it was like you know like the science of like trees talking to each other and all this mm. type of stuff and you're like, Oh that sounds weird, weird. but just in terms of like, like those those connections human connections connections with net like with nature like those are like real things and there's like proper science like backing those things up and um ultimately we we're designed to not live in isolation it's probably mm -hmm. why you know it's one of the reasons why the whole last two years has been like challenging for everyone like physically and mentally because we've had that physical separation um and so yeah it's a great point to finish on if you're if you if you trying to implement something is disaffecting negatively your relationship with like someone you live with loved one whatever like that isn't that isn't a good thing and so recognize your those like trying to implement these things they try to they're trying to make us better people so we can live better lives and have a better influence or a happier influence on the other people around us so um yeah check in with yourself to make sure they are what's happening and don't get overwhelmed by lots of information take the things that resonate most with you initially taste them try them out rule of three tim's 80 percent rule put them all into place no stress perfect well yes so be a different one could be that right yeah, i hope you've enjoyed that a little bit of a lesson implementation not hard science probably people have written books about how to implement behavior change but we just had to there's our take there's our little take on it from a practical applied perspective hey. We're answering the questions from the listeners. So what do you do with all the information? There you go. There you we go. sort of do a bit of this, or we do a bit of that, <laughs> and we see what happens. <laughs> um, right. So there's that. That is a wrap for this week. Um, you can, you know, we you know we go from here. Give us a review if you like, five stars, and you can do that for us. And you can go and and you can book onto a workshop, and you can. Find out if you want some chat on chain programs, you can find those on the website. All of the stuff is there. You can just go and have a little bit of a look. Yeah. Any questions, any requests, um, podcast topics, questions you need us to answer, would like us to answer, or potential podcast guests. I mean, a couple of people have been sending in like, oh, I want you to get this person on. So uh, we will always do our best to get those people on. Um, and uh, yeah, email either me, David at scorecardsex.com or Tim at scorecardsex.com. And we will do our best to answer your questions, get those guests on and anything else that you, uh, your heart requires. Until next time, keep exploring your physical potential with movements, strength and play. Class dismissed. Mm -hmm.